Hi, so hope you enjoyed watching that video and now we're back for talk one or two, whatever you want to call it. A hero is a man of power who can save us from fear. Fear. Oh, storm, all afraid. All being alone in the boat. Well, you think you're alone. Imagine being in that fishing boat in the middle of a stormy sea with the wind blowing and the waves crashing in upon you. There's no way out. Have any of you ever been on a boat when it's very choppy in the sea? Have you ever been the boat's gone up and down like this? Let me show you the boat. So it's gone up and down like this. And you're thinking, oh, oh, I'm feeling a bit sick. I'm feeling a bit sick or I'm feeling, oh, I don't really like to be here. I don't like all of this rocking around. There was no way out. But Jesus was on that boat with the disciples. He knew that God had planned and there was hope and God's will would be done. Jesus was going to die so we could be saved. He nailed fear to the cross and cast it into oblivion. He alone is our Lord and fear will disappear. Keep in step with Christ, your eyes on him. Pray to him. Believe that he is with you now and helping you. So let's think a wee bit about fear. Perhaps you've felt it whenever you're going to a new school or some other new big event and you are walking in and you don't know anybody else and you're really frightened. Or you go to the fun fair and you go on a special ride. I know some of you have been to um, all these places like um, the beach. Well, the beach maybe isn't quite so scary, but there is a ghost train, I think. But there's other ones that are, Oblivion, I think, is one of the rides Alton Towers. And Alton Towers. So if you go to Alton Towers, you go to Oblivion, and I think that's where it suddenly drops a huge amount. But anyhow, you know about it. You just suddenly you're sitting there, and suddenly you go down very fast, and your tummy's still up here. So you feel really quite frightened. Or maybe you've watched a scary movie, or even. Doctor Who, I remember when I was young watching Doctor Who and I had to hide behind the sofa. But I'm older now, so I don't hide behind the sofa quite as much. The boat in the storm. Some of the disciples were very frightened. They came close and you feel that cold hand of fear coming upon you. It touches your arms and your muscles freeze and the strength goes from you. That cold feeling continues to your heart and you think that all your loved ones are gone. You still think about all the things that you've done that you shouldn't have done. Everything is lost. There's no escape. Remember all the nasty words you said to somebody or you accidentally borrowed the biscuits from the biscuit tin from the cupboard or the anger over something really that was insignificant. All these bad things you've done and you would really have liked to have said sorry when you're faced with that life and death moment. So, who's in the boat causing all of this? It's fear that makes you think, okay, there's no way out of this. I can't survive, I'm dead. That's what it is, fear. It's arms all frozen around you and hope is lost, or is it? Who else is in the boat asleep? Because we know God's plan. Jesus was asleep. He was safe. A shout of victory in the midst of hopelessness. Christ Jesus is our Lord, a man of power. Fear shrinks away from him and the winds subside and all is calm. Jesus is in the boat with you. Perhaps you have Christ in the boat with you, but have forgotten about him. So fear comes on board and the waves build up and suddenly you're in the middle of a storm. All at sea. 
or your voyage without faith. You don't know where you're going, you're without hope, you're overwhelmed and you're paralysed by fear. But listen, you've lost the joy of living. You can't move, you can't do anything. You become dull, live from day to day and hour to hour and you feel there's just no escape. It's just too difficult. But there is an escape. Look up John, so the older ones, look up John chapter 16 verse 33. That's John chapter 16 verse 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Christ is right there with you in the boat. Do not be afraid. But the other people in the boat were afraid and they woke Jesus asking, don't you care about us? Jesus tells them, oh you of little faith. Jesus was disappointed in his disciples. They had just seen all his miracles on the shore, the healing of the sick, feeding of the five thousand, all of this. And yet, they still couldn't have the faith and belief in him. Jesus was with them. God was in control. God has everything under control and he is with us in spite of all the stuff that we do. Don't worry about your faith, whether it is weak or, or strong. Just look at Jesus in whom you believe and walk in step with him as you learned last week. Speak to him like you learned to pray. You remember the prayers from last week or maybe you do the five finger prayer that I used to use. God is with you. Speak to him. And we pray that Lord will increase our faith. In Luke chapter 17 verses 3 to 5. God is greater than your sin. God wants us to know his love when everything else that we depend on falls away or disappears. We only have God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit to rely on. You know, you think about the amusement ride where you're sort of at the top of the roller coaster and then it suddenly plunges down and then goes up again. That fear when you're at the top and you think, ah, and the screams and the shouts, oh, you have to wear a mask now to keep them all in. God wants us to know that when you let everything go, when you lose all your own security and have to give it all up, that's when you become totally free to receive God and be kept totally safe in his arms. God gave everything, his only son, to die for us. When the disciples climbed on that boat, they were confident. Jesus had healed so many people. They looked at the nice calm sea and they saw no reason to worry. But the wind and the waves increased and the disciples lost their calm and fear grew in them. They gazed at the sea becoming wild and the waters towering above them and the boat filling with water and they were full of fear, afraid. Jesus was asleep. Only faith can sleep without a care. Faith thinks of its safety and in God alone. The disciples couldn't sleep. Their security was gone. Faith does not rely on itself or favourable scenes, seas, conditions, its strength or other people's strength, but believes only and alone, alone in God. Storm or not, he's, so, he's always there with us and holding us in his arms. So let's look to Jesus and pray for faith to be strong and full. The disciples were amazed. 
when the sea all calmed down and everything was good again. What sort of man is this, that even the sea obeys him? They didn't understand yet what Jesus was all about and who he was and is today. Think of the questions in the devotion book. The devotion book. Why did they think, what did they think was going to happen to them? Why were the disciples afraid? And what did they not understand about Jesus? What sort of person is Jesus when fear has no effect? Who overcomes the fear in human life and takes away its power over us? The disciples were afraid because they didn't believe in Jesus. They were scared of the storm. They didn't realise there was a whole plan. They thought they might die. And why did they not understand that Jesus was the Son of God? Because that hadn't been revealed to them at the time. But we know, we have faith in God, and we know the answer to the question as to why it is good news that Jesus is our Saviour, and he is incredibly powerful. He died that we could be saved. So, older ones, think about this. Jesus died for us because he loved us. And because he died on our behalf, we can now become children of God through faith in him. So think about what you would like to say to Jesus now. So maybe have a little prayer to yourself. And think back to the song again. Jesus is the hero, the son of God. You can know him inside your heart, so it will never be you'll never be on your own. They saw his life, they heard him speak, they saw the signs that would not believe, they chose to hate, they chose to kill. He was rejected, but forgave them still. He is the hero that we need, a man of sorrows. He's the son of God. Do you know his name?